whether whether Sam takes up the shield or not is central to the, the, the narrative. When you guys were working in the development stages, what was like the main thing that you were the most excited to get to direct? Wow, that's a tough one because I, I mean, I don't know that I have a favorite. I think it was every day I just pinched myself that I was showing up on set. And I remember the first time we saw the guys walking on set, you know, it was like, ooh. Uh, so I think I, I, I can say that, um, you know, when you're standing there in the rain and uh, cold and all that, there were moments where I thought, wow, you know, this isn't easy. <laughs> I wish it was warmer or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a joy from start to finish. And every scene had its challenges and its satisfactions. And I don't think we walked away from any scene thinking um, anything but that we had really pushed it as far as we could go. And we, had, we, we came away satisfied. And I know that directing is equal parts planning and equal parts on the day, spontaneity on the day. What's something that really surprised you during filming that maybe wasn't planned, but was happening on the day? Every day uh, that Sam and Bucky are together talking, they love to uh, banter back and forth and, and um, uh, they're friends. So they enjoy each other's company uh, and they really uh, enjoy making each other laugh, particularly if they're not supposed to laugh. You know, there's a lot of hijinks that go on on set. The other thing I love about the show is that we do get to see some of what these guys are going through, even at home, particularly with Sam. We meet his family, which I'm so, so excited about. How much of, of you know, you've talked about we go home with these characters. How much of going home with these characters was sort of pulled from the comic books and how much was developed and created for this story? Their background, their upbringing, their, their you know, their history. Well, obviously, you draw from the, the, um, the, the MCU lore. But um, you're really not beholden to it. I think what is great is, uh, you know, we're not doing a documentary. We're not doing a recreation. Right. We are doing, we are inspired by. And so um, really the characters serve the narrative that we have dreamed up, which mm -hmm. is a really unique story. So while, yes, it, it pulls in both characters and storylines, uh, I would say that it still has its its own um, DNA. Mm -hmm. And so therefore the characters are allowed to have their own DNA as characters that we, we actualize, not from the flat page, but from right. a living, breathing person. One detail that I love, again, from those comic books, and it was so great to hear in the show, is that I forgot that Sam Wilson, he's an uncle, so he's technically Uncle Sam. It's kind of perfect. That's it's correct. That's correct. <laughs> you know, and that's, you know, we, we didn't want to hammer that home too hard, but right. it was a fun little beat. Great little beat, yeah. Uh, another thing I love about the character of Sam Wilson is the potential for for some stories that um, are impactful and very meaningful. And and you know, I'm I'm a kid. Listen, I grew up in San Diego, California, and my parents are from Mexico. And I've loved the Marvel universe my entire life. And it's so important to me to be able to get representation and issues like that tackled in these kinds of stories. Can you talk to us about how the Marvel Universe and Marvel characters are used in this story to talk about the sort of racism that we know and experience in our world uh, every day? That was the whole conversation of the shield, for sure. You know, uh, yeah. the, uh, whether whether Sam takes up the shield or not is central to the, the, the narrative. It's a real exploration of what is it to be a black man carrying that shield? What is it to say? And is mm -hmm. the shield relevant? In similar themes, racism uh, and nationalism become sort of part of the same conversation. So we had, you know, we have uh, our through line is very much um, embracing that that idea because it's post split. So people have come back. They have expectations. Borders are moved. And you know, it does it, it is it going to go back to the old ways? Is that what we want? So it embraces these kinds of conversations that are very important to, um, to and very current in this, in this present climate. Also, the other conversation that we um, were very you know, conscious of was, what is it to be a hero? Um, and that, that is a, a, a you know, sort of a big picture conversation in the whole um, universe, which is uh, where it started and where it is now. You know, the conversations at post World War II and what a hero is, meaning um, someone who was a soldier or a warrior, that was sort of what we always thought of as a hero. And then after 9-11, a hero became uh, a first responder. 
And mm -hmm. so, and that's sort of the contemporary hero is much more of, of what that is. So that's all part of what Sam is dealing with when he just, you know, if he decides to take it up or if he doesn't. Um, it, we are definitely taking it out for a road test uh, and whether or not we should or should. Speaking of, you know, everything that you're talking about, these big ideas that are so important for Marvel and for our stories, the relationships are also so important. You feel the presence that someone like Steve Rogers had to these characters. So how is Sam Wilson coping with without having Steve by his side? And how is it different than how Bucky is coping without having Steve by his side? They have a common friend. Obviously, they are, by definition, they are not really friends. <laughs> uh, they don't particularly like each other. I don't think they dislike each other, but they have no real reason to, you know, uh, find uh, their, their themselves in the same room. Other than they have, a, they share a common loss, which is a friend who has left a hole in their lives. They are also both looking. They're kind of two sides, flip sides of the same coin, in that they are looking for what's next. So, so they're both trying to find an identity. Sam, you know, has been given this shield, and he has to decide whether he'll take it or not. And he has said right at the beginning, he says it doesn't feel like me. And uh, uh, you know, is it relevant? So he's trying to find his footing, and he's also just trying to save his family. Right. Uh, because he's got some, some, you know, family and and what's going on there. Um, which is a very typical um, racially motivated, racially charged story. Yeah. Um, so he's he's uh, grappling with that, having to you know just measure up when called, and then Bucky, who is you know dealing with his own past, you know he's got to figure out how he's going to go forward now that things have changed for him, and how does he fit, and and where is his relevance? He's a hundred years old. <laughs> And, you know, he's living in this world and he's got a metal arm and, you know, and he's lonely. And, uh, you know, it, it, is he going to find someone who has any comprehension of what he's seen and what he's been through? And, and he's not really. So he's going to have to figure out how that is. So the two of them uh, are coming to it with, with very real life, very uh, poignant issues that they mm -hmm. have to um, explore. Absolutely. One last really quick question. Do you have a favorite character? I hate to make you pick your babies. Do you have a favorite character in the MCU? And I know you directed an episode of The Punisher, so he's in the mix as well. Do you have a favorite, Kari? I do not. They're all, I, I honestly can say, I love them all for different reasons. And uh, I, I would be hard, for, I, I honestly would not be able to choose. That is the, the perfect sort of scout's honor answer. I really appreciate it, Kari. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thank you.